a rare and wonderful experience for any actor to be able to, to recreate the life of a close personal friend, particularly when that life is as exciting and dramatic as Eddie Duchin's. Disclaimer. The Eddie Duchin story is not a great movie. It's a good movie, and it's an old-fashioned movie, but it's not a great movie. It has big stars, Tyrone Power and Kim Novak, and it was the 10th highest grossing movie of 1956. It's one of those 1950s biopics that has a lot more pick than bio to it. And there were a lot of those. The Glenn Miller story, Love Me or Leave Me, Victor Mature as Crazy Horse, anyone? Life stories told on screen where the truth is stretched, twisted, or even fabricated and covered with saccharin to be served to the public as a quote, unquote, true story. The Eddie Duchin story is guilty of all of that. It's also guilty of being set in the years between the late 1920s and the late 1940s, but never really looking like anything other than 1955. Putting all of that aside, what it does have is its Academy Award nominated cinematography by Harry Stradling, giving us beautiful color scenes of mid-50s New York masquerading as the 1930s. The movie follows the rise and tragic end of popular band leader and piano player Eddie Duchin, who gained prominence in the early 30s playing what was termed as sweet music. His wife died six days after the birth of his son Peter, and Peter would go on to be raised by family friends. Eddie, he would serve in the Navy during World War II and upon his return, never really regained his pre-war popularity. He died at the age of 41 from leukemia. Tyrone Power, who had been a personal friend of Eddie Duchin's, gives a pretty solid performance aided by his prep work months prior to filming where he learned the intricate keyboard fingering for the musical numbers. Kim Novak is beautiful and extremely melodramatic. As far as the movie goes, Peter Duchin has written very negatively about the script, saying there was too much unnecessary fictionalization of his parents' lives and deaths. We're here for the mood. Shot on location in New York City between August and October of 1955, with what appears to be the absolute bare minimum of consideration for period accuracy. It's the waiting days of summer and it's autumn in the city, and that's what the cinematography beautifully captures. But even as early as the 1950s, New York had lost a lot of those 1920s landmarks. The production design team had to recreate locations like the luxurious Central Park Casino, one of New York's most expensive nightclubs, and the place where Duchin got his start. Because by 1955, it was already a piece of lost New York, it fell victim to Prohibition and the Depression and was demolished in 1936. But there are some beautiful street scenes and exterior shots of ivy-covered buildings and the Waldorf Astoria starlight roof, which is now a pool. And there's the romance of the city with its old skyline. And even though this apartment is a studio set with a painted backdrop, it's so evocative of the glamour and romance of the city at mid-century. Through its open windows, the world is alive with vibrant possibility. The Eddie Duchin story is cinema's first real lush romantic love letter to New York City. I've watched this scene on repeat more times than I can count. But autumn is also the season of melancholy and loss. This is where you used to play the piano. The Central Park Casino used to be here, didn't it, Dad? We know that we're headed for a very tragic end. When we first see Tyrone Power, he's playing Eddie Duchin as a 20-something-year-old man. And it's a credit to his ability to convince us of Duchin's naivete and eagerness, so much so that we forget he's 41 years old at the time. And Eddie's wonder and excitement about the unlimited possibilities of life in the big city, it's a universal story. 
Columbia marketed the film as an old-fashioned story. Its music, lush and melodic, meant to push back against the ever-popular rock and roll. The film was meant to give an experience that movies' top pest, television, could never provide. And it does that, with its soundtrack, its cinematography, and its big-name stars. And even though the true story differs from this fictionalized account, the brick and the stone and the concrete of the city at mid-century is true. To quote that old Rogers and Hart song, the great big city is a wondrous toy made for a girl and boy. We'll take Manhattan and turn it into an isle of joy. There are eight million stories in the cinema cities. This has been one. <laughs>